If the end goal is just to make money for yourself, you'll probably not be very happy. There was this saying that says that anyone live their life chasing power, wealth, or even happiness, they will never achieve it because you'll never be enough. But on the other hand, if the end goal is to be of service to others, your reason for making money is not just for yourself, but for your loved ones or for others, right? Then life can be more fulfilling this way. Money can still come, but your objective is not making money for yourself, but really serving the community. Welcome back to Wise and Shine. I'm your host Reggie, aka your Chief Financial Coconut, and I'm joined with Alex, right? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> For Alexa. everybody that still don't know you after so many episodes, you this want to is, yourself. <laughs> this is Alex Low. You can find me, Alex Low underscore Growth Mindset Coach. Oh, you're yeah, now Growth Mindset Coach. Yeah, it's oh. my new handle. New handle. Mm, what remember change? That? Remember, right? <laughs> Growth Mindset Coach. Okay. <laughs> but what change? What change? Well, the other one is more of a personal account. So ah, you would okay. see pictures of my kids and okay, my family. Okay, okay. And if I want to go professional and I want it to be a more public mm. profile, mm. I created a, another one. Okay, great, yeah. great. But today we are joined with a very big profile. Oh, yes, yes, right, yes. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Frank. Cool. Yeah, Mr. Frank, right. You want to introduce yourself for everybody that somehow don't know you. Probably deflated profile is a better way to, uh, <laughs> to talk about it. Because, uh, you know, after 30 years in corporate world, I decided to come out on my own. And, and since Alex uh, introduced herself as the growth mindset coach, well, I got to do something. Probably I call myself someone who can help organizations and people transform their work into play. I like that. Very nice. And in fact, I have had people come to me and say, oh, your next play, right? And that's exactly what you have, right? So Alex, what is your next play? I say, hey, that sounds very familiar. I say, yeah, we got it from uh, Frank, right? So <laughs> it's already famous, your next play. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> very, very smooth on this transition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very cheesy, but very smooth. Definitely feels like a play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I'm all to it, actually. I'm all to it, more to it. We want to hear more about yeah, that today yeah, yeah. as well. Okay, so before we go into the plug, uh, the next play framework and all those stuff, right? I must set the premise for today's episode, okay? So today we want to talk about this very important question is can we actually build a purpose-driven career? Or are we <laughs> loading career with too many things? Then uh, we'll go along and see what can we conclude at the end, uh, right? So what are, your, what are your thoughts? I mean, you've been in this corporate grind for way longer than all of us. Uh, so, so tell us a little bit, what are your thoughts about this purpose-driven career thing? Does it work? Is, is there a thing like that? Wow. Well, it is a million dollar question. <laughs> so the, question, the first question is, oh, what's the meaning of purpose? Well, different people have different purpose and the purpose can change actually for different people in different stages of their life. So for instance, for someone who first started out working or within the first five years, the purpose may be, I want to be a multimillionaire by the time I reach X. And then for someone who is in mid-career, the purpose can be, I want to have more time taking care of my young children or aged parents. And then for people in the later part of their career, the purpose may be that I want to have financial stability to be able to retire more successfully or in a sense, without much concern about, you know, whether I will be able to pay my medical bills. So purpose can be different for different people. For instance, a lot of people I know say that I want to contribute back to society. I want to help the poor. I want to help the dyslexic. I want to be able to support the old folks. I want to solve env environmental problems. And uh, this can actually span across all ages. In a sense, purposes are different for different people. But personally, I do believe that if someone work for meaning, right, as defined by themselves, uh, that would be more sustainable. And personally, I also believe that the productivity of the individual will be much better. Okay, okay. So, so to be clear, right, there's a two sub definition in whatever you just discussed, right? First is a more utility view of purpose, which I think people just commonly call it goals. Like you have a goal, you want to retire, you want to like make your first million, you know, that's kind of, I, I want to break down the definition, right? So that we get a clearer discussion. And then the other one is the more atas one, very high and mighty one, you know, I want to change the world, right? Collectively seen as change the world type of purpose. Shall we work on one angle of the purpose or do we want to go on both? I don't know. I was thinking thinking whether it is something where it is main purpose versus a secondary purpose uh, or do you want to look at it as a utility versus a higher calling? How do you define this? I mean, because it, it's kind of tied to your framework, right? So I want to speak within your framework on this purpose thing because, but I, I do observe two definitions in whatever you've just established. Talking about framework, maybe the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 
<laughs> That's the framework that many of us will know. Some of us may be in so-called lower level of needs and uh, by no means low, lower in terms of uh, the, the value, but by Maslow's definition, right? If let's say your needs are physical, security, you may want to have some financial resources to be able to support a good living for your family, that's, that's fine, right? And so that's one, one level. And then there's another level, which is uh, the ego, right? Which is, okay, I want to, ma uh, to run an organization of 200 people, 2,000 people, you name it. Why? Because that's my ambition. And that's, you can say, my objective or my purpose at that time. Or it can be self-actualization. I've been very blessed. I want to bring more value to society. So again, it's uh, very difficult to define whether it's personal or whether it's more holistic. But uh, I think at different parts of uh, our life, in fact, definitely different parts of my life, my so-called purpose-driven work is also different. To give you an example, when I first started work, what is purposeful for me is to be able to earn a certain amount of money on a monthly basis, afford a certain type of house, run a certain type of organization. That was my purpose. And in fact, based on that, I have three-year goals. You know, I'll set three-year running goals. Now, but at a certain point in time, and to me, that was during the global financial crisis in 2008, I realized that those goals, objectives, or purpose to me at that time was very materialistic. And it became a bit meaningless, right? Maybe because, you know, look at Maslow's hierarchy, uh, I may have achieved some levels of needs, right? The security needs, and therefore, I thought, okay, I want to do something that's different. And it was during the time that I had my personal experience supporting two of my friends who were laid off from work. In fact, both of them went into depression. So actually, I supported them through their depression. And I found that these were the things that were very meaningful for me. I thought, you know, if I could do something in my professional life where I can feel like I was helping people, then that would be the most joyful thing that I could ever do. Um, I thought at that time that it was really an epiphany. Now, looking back, I realized it was midlife crisis. <laughs> But to contextualize, actually, even the COVID situation, it's also like a platform similar to the great financial crisis, right? Because everybody kind of got forced to stop, right? And the musical chair stopped. Then you take time to reevaluate everything. And then your priorities and purpose start to evolve, you know, oh, on, yeah. on that. On that exactly. Front. And in fact, during that time, I took action. Actually, I took a drastic pay cut to move from the technology sector, which has a much higher pay, to the education sector. Because I felt that, you know, by being involved in education, I could actually feel that I was helping people in the course of my work. And even though my financial resources at the time was not exactly very good, it was a tough decision, but I made that decision. And I never looked back. I was happy that I made that decision because the job that I did subsequently was a lot more aligned with my purpose at the time of helping people to then, uh, you know, what the fi my financial returns can support me on. Wait, just to lay a context on this, right? In hindsight, right, because you've done the change and then you, you got to even further where you are, would you say that whatever you've done in the first half of your career also matters in terms of the accumulation of resources? You know, because I, I want to contextualize it because I'm very afraid people start to be like, oh yeah, let's just go for purpose, you know, and then like don't care about accumulating wealth because on some level you're doing yourself a disservice if you do not get to a certain state of financial, you know, level now. Right, you don't have the resources, then you limit, you don't have the prequel to go further. You, you know what I mean? So in hindsight, do you think both phases were important and not just purpose-driven like that. Oh, indeed. Yeah. In fact, before I took the leap, I actually assessed my financial position at that time. And in fact, like you say, uh, Reggie, thankfully, I have accumulated certain amounts of savings because of the work that I've done before that I was able to take the leap. So evaluating your financial position before you take the leap is important. My other learning is that the health situation is also very important. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I thought, okay, I was still young. I was about 40 years old and my health was fantastic. So I, even if, let's say, I need more financial resources subsequently that I can still go back to do other things that will support me on that as well. So in a sense, that gave me the confidence to take the leap to, well, follow my purpose, if you would, with uh, much lesser pay. In some ways, that's your thought process also, right? In your previous venture, I remember we were talking about this, yeah. you know, because you feel like you're in a good position, family is, is healthy, good, financial resources sound okay, still have the energy to do one more big entrepreneur push. Is, is that kind of... I think yes and no. For myself, it was more of push to the point where there's no other option actually. 
right? But I think for me, that jump would, would have been in my early 30s when I shifted from uh, an educator to go to the dark side, right? Private sector, right? And <laughs> it's been 10 over years <laughs> from dark side, private sector to entrepreneurship. It's been a journey for me. In terms of purpose, I am very, very aligned with your thoughts and ideas as well. And yeah, so... Okay, that's the end of the episode. Yeah, Everybody's aligned. Yeah, career, no, la, we, need to, we need to continue to ask, right? So I want to ask a question. Question, right? Because I've encountered many young people who tell me that they already have discovered their purpose. And there are some people that, especially older folks, lah, that would be like, oh, that's BS, right? You know, you're only 18 years old. How can you identify your purpose already? Because us having gone through life a few years, a few decades of work, we sort of understand it as being slightly non-linear. So what are your thoughts on that, right? Purpose for a young person that hasn't even gone out to the workforce yet versus people that have been in multiple careers. So, so maybe and, just clarify. Yeah, and, and that's and, and there's a point I want I wanted to chime in on that because that's the high and mighty idea that I was talking about. <laughs> you know, where people in their teens or twenties or never, even millennials, right, just like have somehow someday, a very bad day, then you know, has an epiphany to say, okay, okay, this is my purpose, right? And then everything else get deprioritized. Then if they get that. a bit older, like yeah. uh, undergrad or whatever, yeah. then they join a accelerator incubator, yeah, then yeah. their startup is their lifeline, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. their purpose. So yeah. I mean I guess you can see that progression and see where it comes yeah, from. But just want to hear you hear your thoughts eh? oh sure yeah. sure i assume uh, first of all that uh, the purpose referring to uh, refers to the more egalitarian not just for themselves not like me when i was young when i say i want to earn so much money and yes, have yes. this sort of car right so it's more about helping people or starting up something that's brand new high risk it's not something that is easy or sometimes not advisable so there is a need to really for everyone whether young or old to have some kind of a self-awareness i view uh, and also environmental awareness. Now, let's say we just look at Singapore. Singapore is now very much of a developed nation. In a sense, the parents of these young people that, that you refer to may not need the support. So as a result, they have more choice. Uh, in fact, because even if let's say they don't make it from the purpose, the parents can still build them up literally, <laughs> right? So as a result, there's a, a lot more flexibility and therefore it allows them or even encourages them to do things that are just outside of just a financial consideration. Obviously, along the way, things can change as it has changed for me. My view right now, and also through my experience, is that everyone's identity can change. Sometimes when somebody says, okay, I want to pursue my purpose, it's about experimenting with something new. And as you experiment with something new, you realize that, hey, what I thought I was about to do is not exactly what I want to do. And as a result, you get to know yourself better. At the same time, you also get to know the environment better. You can say, okay, I have tried a plan A, but plan A, when it hits the market, has no demand in return. So what do I do? You use the term pivot <laughs> right now. So essentially, a lot of us, as we take on new experiments, we would pivot along the way. And I think nowadays it's okay. It's okay because we get a new experience, we learn, we pivot, we get a new experience, we learn, we pivot. Right. And increasingly, in this ever-changing world, we have to do more and more of this. So I think for everyone who says that, okay, I want to do something with a purpose, there will be changes along the way. And maybe the purpose or the road to the purpose can also change. Right. And this is what's... Fair, fair, fair. But I, I got an important question to ask. But before that, I just want to ask, last time people used what? Leh? Now people used the word pivot. <laughs> what, what's the old word? <laughs> So update, huh? update. Oh, update so, uh, let me think. Uh, because we are also different generations. Different generations. Uh, let me think. Uh. Maybe it was progress. Uh, progress, yeah. <laughs> now it's called pivot, right? Because it's easier to move outwards at that time. Now it's pivot. Maybe you move sideways, maybe move downwards, right? <laughs> environment is different. Yeah, exactly. No, but, but I really like that discussion about how the environment in some ways inform and influences your purpose, right? Because there's so much discussion about just be yourself, you know, dig deeper inside. But it does not run in reality right because reality is you need to test this thing out in the market to see what is going on. and market goes beyond markets right we're talking about essentially the broader environment of whether these ideas stand you know or whether your purpose actually gets picked up you know in this environment that you're at so i really like that and i want to kind of dig deeper into how do you evaluate whether you're in the right environment or how do you even evaluate the environment that you're in the conventional way would be to ask yourself uh, what's your aspiration What's your strength? What are your values? Uh, what the market wants? What people are willing to pay for? So the logic is that when 
all these combined together, you have a true north. Obviously, then you cannot just think about it, you need to take action. And when you leverage this, you go into the market, then you realize that it may be true, may not be true. Maybe it may be true 20% of the time. And so how do you, well, change course a little, fine tune your work a little so that it's more aligned to what you know the market wants and aligned to what you really want. Mm. Mm, okay. So then if that's the case, are you in a fine tuning process for yourself? Because I mean, you left the corporate grind, you left high flying role, right? And you're doing your own thing. So is it a situation where whatever you're trying to do now does not sit within the corporate structure that you were at? So then you, because of the environment, you have a new career, you, you will have a new purpose. You explore a different environment to kind of propagate that purpose. Is that kind of the, the, the idea there? Absolutely. Uh, there's never been a day or an hour that I don't fine tune my approach. Can I can I also refine or rephrase that for my own understanding, right? And even the the listeners, the true north, which is something that you mentioned, is it's always there, right? That direction that you move towards is is the same, which is another term we can use, or I would like to think of is is a constant, right? However, how you get there situational environment and whatever uh, you need to pivot for is that meander towards that true north. Is it correct for us to, to uh, understand it that way? Uh, I think that's a very good metaphor. Mm. Yeah, if I can just use a similar one, maybe it's not north, maybe it's west. If you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say for instance, right? Um, you say, okay, I want to head to New York. That is my true north or from the perspective of Singapore is a northwest. Okay. <laughs> Right, so, okay, there are many ways to, to head to New York, right? You can fly there, you can take a boat, right? I mean, you can swim, but <laughs> depends. So, but you know it's the general direction. Then you know that, okay, if you take um, a boat or a, a cruise, the Atlantic Ocean that they're heading for, it's not the Pacific Ocean. Now, along the way, as you sail, and you realize that, okay, let me, I, I saw India. It was interesting from afar. Can I try it out to see what it's like in India? You stop over at India. You try it out. Sometimes we say that, hey, actually India is better than New York or Calcutta is better than New York. And maybe I, I, I stop there. I, I don't want to go to New York. On the other hand, you, you may have seen Calcutta and you say, hey, okay, I'll continue my journey. And then when you move further, okay, you see the great land of America. And you may not arrive at New York. Maybe you arrive at Florida, right? A lot of old people sunbathing. Miami. In Miami, yeah, that's right. Old people, but actually bright sunshine, right? You may say that hey, actually... Somehow, I was planning to go to New York, but my compass brought me to Miami. And it's a place that I love. You know, I love the sunshine. I love dealing with old people, <laughs> living in like retirement <laughs> villages. He say one, right? I say or one. Going to, <laughs> even like heading up to Orlando in Disney World. I'll just be there, right? But to your point, Alex, really it's like a true north or a true northwest in this case. But then you may end up somewhere, but the direction is there, right? You know that it's the Atlantic Ocean you're going for. It's not the Pacific Ocean. So it, gives, it serves as a guidance for you, for all of us. I think that's interesting yeah. because the prequel of the true north is a static position, mm. right? I mean, that means this thing is fixed up. It has to be like that, right? The destination, uh, right? And I think for a lot of people today, there is a lot of search for this static position, mm. right? This true north. Hence, the disappointment builds up quite seriously, right? Because the truth is, as you move along, as you explore the environment, I'm using the framework that's here, yeah? As you explore the environment, you realize that maybe this true north are not so easy to get, you know, or maybe there's something else that you can settle for that is in the general direction, right? And that, that, that kind of closes the gap of the logic that's being propagated out there about this purpose, you know, thing. You know, I feel like purpose is very high and mighty, like, very hard to hit one. Like. And your purpose keeps evolving. Like. So that's my, that's my point of view. Yeah, but what, what it is is that if let's say you uh, follow this route, at least on C, you reach either Miami or New York or, you know, the CDC in between, you won't arrive at San Francisco. So you do not then believe that purpose is sacred in itself. Like. It can evolve. Like. That's a general premise, right? That's a position. The road to your purpose can evolve. Maybe your purpose, let's say for instance, is not to arrive at New York, but to land on USNA, right? So that's a bigger purpose, right? So, but New York is part of USNA. So it depends on how broad your purpose is, how narrow it is, and then you'll be there, but you're, you're hitting that direction. Okay, okay. Hey, I hope you're enjoying Wise and Shine so far. I'm your host, Reggie, aka your chief and Ninja Coconut. And for us to continue to do this show so that you become a tad bit wiser every week, you gotta like, share, subscribe, help us be the algorithm. But even more importantly, if you can, 
comment in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts and also some questions that you would love us to answer. Yeah, now back to the show. But I think we need to address that today's topic, right? Yeah. Which is a purpose-driven career. And I think it's a question that many people are not able to answer for themselves. They're in the rut, they're in the rat race. How do they convert that rut and rest, rat race career into a purpose-driven one? Is it redefining their mindset towards the work that they do? Or is it about quitting and finding, um, being an entrepreneur? <laughs> don't, oh. uh, don't. I say this many times, don't. <laughs> or really looking for something that is 100% aligned to, or at least 70%, right? So the question also is, how many percent does it need to be aligned? And are there really going to be so many jobs out there for purpose-driven employees to be applying for? Well, this is um, a question that I'm trying to solve as well. And that's why I started this company called Nextplay. Hopefully to shed some likes, mm. not to solve the problem, but to shed some likes in uh, to this area. So when I was in LinkedIn, I kind of like have this crystal ball, not the ball in itself, but through the data and the insights, I could see that uh, a lot of people's career is being disrupted. People move from jobs to jobs, from location to location, just to access the jobs. People who have left jobs and not being employed for quite some time. Uh, I could see this in uh, the LinkedIn data. And in the fact, that was one of the drivers for me to come out and try to at least make a certain impact in my own way. And since coming out on to the start of Next Play over the, the last three and a half months, I had a chance to meet up with a lot of people who, well, either feel stuck in their career or feel like their skills are not relevant or believe that they're in a toxic work environment or with bad managers or some of them have a fear of being disrupted in their work. And it's, it's not a good situation because um, you can sense that some of the people I met with are really feeling fairly de depressive. And so I, I realized that this thing that X play is going to do, hopefully to transform people's work into play is not just useful, but also very necessary. So the next thing to ask is, so what's a challenge? And there'll be some of these challenges that I've mentioned. And people want to say, okay, how do I align what I do with my purpose? Then what you need to do is actually to kind of open up the question again, like we did on what's the meaning of purpose? Now, there's some fundamental uh, requirement that we talked about. So first of all, the foundational part is understand what's your financial position first. And also what's your health position, both physically and mentally. Now, if let's say you are okay, then you can think about next step. Now, and all of us, in you know, whatever we do now, including uh, Reggie, you started a huge podcast oh, thank career, you. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's really also part of a purpose, right? It's not just for financial gains, it's purpose. But when you talk about going forward, so what is the aspiration that you have for yourself, your family, your loved ones? That's one. The second thing is, you know, throughout your past life that you have worked, you have accumulated certain skills that can be put to good use in future. And the third area is from where we have grown up, we have also accumulated certain values that are non-negotiable. So these are the things that will be grounding for us to take the next step. And then, well, the next evaluation is to say that, okay, you may want to do something, but does the market need it? Even if you want to go into charity, do they need your help? <laughs> <laughs> and what, what can you contribute in terms of skills, right? Um, so there's also a question on environments. Now, once you have understood that, then the next thing you do is to say, Wow. So if you want to move towards that direction, what sort of experiment do you want to take? Well, let's say, for instance, if you are working on a job and you may not be too happy, but it's okay. You can take on what is known as a low risk probes. So some people have side gigs. During the weekends or weekday nights, they can say, so say okay, I think I want to try something like this. And it's low risk because if it makes sense to you after you've tried, then you can do more. But if it doesn't make sense, you can stop and do something else. So low risk probes is important and along the way you learn about yourself, about the environment, and then you build up skills. And then you can then go on the journey of self-discovery and external discovery. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's true, it's true. That's why the day I, I was in I was in China, right? And then some of my friends were like, hey, you see all these people opening small little shops? I was like, pu hui zuan qian wan la. this thing cannot make money. Man. And then they were like, no, they're experimenting, they're they trying, they, they see whether yeah. it works. I was like, Oh, so okay. So although I got a bigger purpose, but if you sponsor, I still very welcome. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Money is still very important to run a network. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, okay, okay. So, I mean, I I, I get the idea, right? I get the methodology. You, you have any clarification? If not, I actually understand a lot of these things. No, I like it. I like, I like the experimentation part and I can see it reflected in my own life, right? So, I've run a cafe before. It was my side castle. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it, okay. was, it was fun. It was fun. Hey, okay. Oh, 
okay, yeah, okay, yeah. don't do cafe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean but now you ask me to do I will not do yeah, okay. right? uh, I've been in hospitality I've been in upcycling business uh, recycling uh, old furniture so all of this I've spent hours or years producing vintage wallpaper notebooks that I thought everyone would love and buy but eventually nobody did but all of that was skills that I was learning and acquiring and experimenting mm -hmm. and, and it is has made me who I am today being able to co-host the podcast with yeah, you today of course Reggie. of course yeah, must have some depth to host this podcast one not simple oh, right. absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in fact I think through this process you learn to be agile as well yes right you yeah. learn to actually look at the environment you, you can make the changes accordingly I believe you learn resilience Wait, you learn about enterprise just on this basis right are we saying that a lot of people are not experimenting enough is that the basis of thought first of all they are just satisfied with what they do not necessarily that they're happy with what they do many of them are not happy but unfortunately, they feel they have no choice but to uh, suffer what they need to, right? Which is very sad for me. But then, of course, there are also another group of people who know that they're not happy. They want change, but they don't know what to change to. So that's where the process will start. Now, obviously, we want to bring people from wanting change but not knowing how to wanting change and have a good plan, ready to learn, to transform themselves, and ready to take action. And the reality is that once you take action, you realize that that plan needs to change as well. Like uh, you mentioned, Alex, you started with one business, you go to another one, but what happens that you have taken action? And then through experimentation, you realize you need to change, right? But that's a part and parcel of our learning journey. And then we are the better for it. I'm sure when you look back, you wouldn't regret going through that journey. I think one, at that point in time, we'll regret. La. At that point, la. <laughs> it's very on, painful. Uh, a lot on of hindsight, problem. okay, la, all the yeah, learning. Yeah, I think yeah. what, what a huge group of people do not even know is that they don't even have that awareness to know that they need that change or that want that change. So what you brought up are two groups, right? People that want change but cannot change. But then there's another group of people that want change but don't know how to change. And then there's the huge group that actually don't even know that they need change. And and that's the question, right? Because we are quite like imi and tao, right? We're all like, oh yeah, career purpose uh, driven is very important. You know, like it's 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 very good. But actually, there, there is another school of thought where, you know, career is career, la, just work, la, right? Don't need to have purpose one, right? right? Just just get your things done, you know, then you balik kampong, you can do all your purpose thing outside. So I want to see what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, that definitely. I, I do agree with that. You know, when we talked about meaning at work, right? It did not be the very esoteric one uh, as to I want to save the world in my work. So it can be very simple as I, I need to earn the money at work so that I can do something outside of work. Some people talk about work-life balance in this way. There are certain times I dedicate to working, I get the money, I can then spend on things I dedicate to live my life, right? So, so, so it's possible. There are also people who find meaning in the form of relationship at work. You have a good friends at work, you enjoy it, that's good enough. You know, it's a satisfactory life. Or there are some people who work because they want to be the best in their craft. I'm an accountant. I love to be the best accountant, at least in my district. <laughs> Tampanese ah, number, number one, one accountant, number, number, number one accountant. Number one accountant. <laughs> it's not possible Tampanese got 44. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something that's meaningful as well to them, right? So everyone has a different, I would say meaning in the work they do, right? You just move purpose aside, but it's just a meaning of why they're doing something. You're right, different people are different. I like, I like how he has broken down because I've always seen purpose as meaning. I use these two terms synonymously. Interchangeably, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, now you've broken down meaning and purpose as separate. So meaning, purpose, and fulfillment to me have always been under the same bucket. Lah. But if we break purpose and meaning, then what about fulfillment though? Uh, is that part of uh, meaning you, you feel? Or is that part of purpose? But in my view, yes. I may be wrong. I'm... No, it's okay. It's a framework. Everybody's just loading the words differently, right? So <laughs> hearing your hearing your thought. Right, right. Uh, well, I mean, based on the definition of fulfillment, is really when you do something that's quite aligned with your purpose or the meaning that you want to achieve, you get fulfillment. Fulfillment is the return. Also, it's a byproduct. It's the outcome. Yeah, that's right. It's outcome. Yeah. Outcome of the, the meaning and the, the purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, if let's say you're doing something that you, you don't find meaning in or you don't think it's aligned with your purpose, you won't be fulfilled. Examples in this, you know, there are a lot of, you know, high level senior executive who feel very unhappy because they can't align what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis with what they want, you know, in life, right? Which is meaningful and purposeful, right? In fact, when I made the first career change from technology to education, eventually it's to really define fulfillment. And uh, at that time, I thought I discovered this like, purpose at that time, just to help people in the course of my work. That was purpose. And when I move over, you know, even sacrificing financial gains, um, it was fulfilling for me. Right? I was happy for that. Is there statistical proof 
about the high level exec being unhappy um, well, or, it's more anecdotal okay, okay. you know even because before, I'm trying to, I'm trying to factor the variance uh, you know maybe middle working professionals by percentage also very unhappy you know and it's same it's same so so it, it does not it, yeah it's possible it's possible that um, people at all levels can be unhappy right and it's got nothing to do with position yes. or salary but the reality is that they are unhappy right yeah. so then the question is how can it be happier at work, right? There can be many ways to resolve that. Yeah. No, what I like about the discussion was that there's a reconciliation with this idea of purpose, you know, subjecting it to some level of like, as long as you're happy, can ready, right? Because uh, like, like when I come into this discussion on the other side of like, oh, you don't need to subject your work to very atas meaning of purpose, right? But you came in with the discussion of like, but your purpose can be just making money, right? And, and then from there, as long as your purpose of doing this thing is aligned with the thing itself, then you're not so unhappy already, man, because there's no more dissonance. You square it, right? Then all the atas thing that you want to do, all the very high and mighty ideas, right, can be out of the career. But you still fundamentally is a career, it's a purpose-driven career fundamentally in that sense, would you still consider? That means I just want to make money, right? My goal of doing this career is to make money and I choose this path because, you know, I'm decently good at it and the market is paying me decently well, right? We're, we're higher than other things that I can do and I just go and do my job. Well. So from that view, closing the discussion, is that considered a purpose-driven career? Maybe just to open up the discussion a bit. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean, right? That's why right. at the start, the, the definition of purpose is very important. Right, right yeah. So, so, so in my view, if your end goal, right? now, now I come with a new term, end goal, right? Yeah. If end goal is just to make money for yourself, you probably not be very happy. There was this saying that says that, you know, if anyone lived a life chasing power, wealth, or even happiness, they will never achieve it because you'll never be enough. If our end goal is to make money, when we arrive at a certain point, uh, you'll never be enough. We want to make more. But on the other hand, if the end goal is to be of service to others. Now, instead of uh, thinking about it in a very broad terms, but let's narrow it down. Let's say, for instance, if I want to make money so that my family can have a better life, so that my parents can take holiday with me on a yearly basis. Now, your reason for making money is not just for yourself, but for your loved ones or for others, right? Then life can be more fulfilling this way. Likewise, if let's say you do something to serve a broader community, right? To be of service to the community, then your life can be more fulfilling. Money can still come, but your objective is not making money for yourself, but really serving the community. And in fact, I can just uh, share a story. Very recently, there was another very senior executive who came out and wanting to take on a portfolio career, uh, starting as a, a coach. Not, not the growth mindset coach because that's an extreme profitable segment. But uh, <laughs> some other... Hey, waiting, uh, Frank waiting. approved that. He <laughs> tests the environment say this is a profitable segment. Huh? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So in a, maybe a less profitable segment. Now, this executive came out and said that the, the key objective is to make 40% of what she was being paid. She went into depression because she never made... She couldn't even hit it. Yeah, more than, more, than, more than 20%, right? So now the objective was money and that, that's the end game. You, you'll never be happy. And what happened is that she decided to change. In fact, she had some uh, good mentors, got her to change. And then her objective looked, uh, talked about uh, the number of lives she can impact positively in the course of her career. And then she became happier because she measured success by the lives she can impact. And actually the money came in. Unknowingly, on the second year, she made more than 40% by not focusing on that. Learning from this, then my, my thought is that, well, yeah, your objective for doing anything should not just be money for yourself alone. It should be to do something to serve the needs of other people and the rest can come in and you'll be happier. So it's not a case of kai sing jiu hao. Uh, There's a lot of other things yeah, to yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Uh, yeah. Yeah, wei ren jiu hao. Uh, wei ren jiu hao. <laughs> okay, okay. Great, great, great. I, I really like our discussion. Right? I think it unpacked some of the trending things out there like, that people talk about that I think can provide a lot more context. And uh, I really like it. So let's go one round to, to close the episode. Right? So usually we go around, around to share one thing that you picked up from the discussion that's not yours, lah, that you find that it tied back to the discussion today of can you build a purpose-driven career? So yeah, Frank, you, you want to start? First of all, you know, uh, the growth mindset coaching segment is a very profitable segment. <laughs> that's one. I'm waiting for referrals. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah very Frank. profitable. <laughs> to Alex. It's like podcasting, of course. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, and uh, also what I learned is that, you know, different people has different definition of purpose, meaning, or goals, right? And it's really 
up to us to experience to really find out what we really want in life and in our professional life. Good, I like that. Yeah, anything? So I think for me, I've always seen purpose as synonymous with meaning as well as fulfillment. And today really opened up that reframe for me. La. And thanks, you know, Frank, for, for, for that and this discussion. So fulfillment is the outcome that we get from that meaning or purpose, which will be different for different people uh, in different stages of their life. Uh, I've always maintained that your purpose is a constant, which is why uh, when you mentioned true north that was something that i really uh, aligned with yeah so i think that that's one can i add one more please? yeah 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 Not go go for it yeah can can so can, the yeah. other one is experimenting la, which is something that i think it's a it's a nice word for people to to know and to feel like hey i'm experimenting with my life i'm experimenting with my purpose uh, and with that, you can pivot, you can progress, and you can learn. So very, very relevant to the growth mindset. Right? So I will use that, experimenting. Uh, these are the two things that I gained today. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. So actually, to me, right, uh, this topic, I've toyed with it. Up, down, left, right, front, and center. Right? And uh, many different guests have come along and shared bits and pieces of it. Right? But, but I think you've, you've kind of given this a lot of thought. I, mean, I can tell, I can tell. Because every question I shoot at you, you also got ting ting tang tang, you can block it, right? So, so, so that means you've, you've explored this uh, with sufficient depth, right? And, and I think the one thing that I really took away from, from this discussion is that he has validated a lot of these ideas that I've already toyed with for a while. And the main idea that I think a lot of people could kind of benefit from is to define your purpose beyond you, right? Because this is a cheesy idea, you know, that I think a lot of people talk about it, but people talk about it in a very casual way. Sometimes they copy other people's idea, then they spread lah, macam like, you know, just do it. But I can tell from the discussion that you have evaluated this in a very serious way, where the definition of a purpose needs to go beyond yourself. Then you will have that drive to do more. And it's not just, like it can be your family or it could be a broader purpose. And if you can't go much further, then start with your family. I think that's a good place to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure time. to yeah. be here. Thanks, Reggie. Um, Thanks, Alex. For our audience that want to connect with you, where can they find you? You know, where's the best place to talk to you? Well, I'm on LinkedIn. Of course, lah. He pretty My, much built LinkedIn yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Were you the start of the twenty man team? Were you like? Did you start join LinkedIn at that point in time in in Singapore? Oh no, not really. When I started joining LinkedIn, it was a uh, two hundred fifty man team. Yeah, it was eight years ago. And now I think it's gone up to about 400 over. So but not, not, not to my credit, <laughs> it's the business yeah. and the impact that the company has made. Uh, but I, I was really happy to really be in an environment where I could really learn a lot. And LinkedIn is very much of a social enterprise in my view. When internally, we always say that we want not just to do well, but do good. And the vision of uh, creating economic opportunity for the global force is something that really I aspire to. Interesting. Yeah. So follow Frank on LinkedIn. And after the camera shot, I want to ask about the big data. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's so much there, but I know cannot really say on set. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. And we'll see you next week. Bye.